This is my last video in this series, at least, um, focusing on uh, setting up and viewing regions of integration uh, in polar form. There will be applications that come later where we will definitely use these skills again, but for purposes of just teaching the concept, this is the last video in this particular series. So here we go. We're going to look at a region R defined such that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 16. So we know if this equals 16, we are looking at the circle. Less than or equal to 16 would be inside of a circle, and the radius is 4, that's correct. And y equals 2 is a horizontal line. y is greater than or equal to 2 would be um, above that line. And the word and implies that it's in the circle and must be above this line. So, finally, the question itself will be to convert or set up this double integral expression into polar form, given that region above. So, circle radius 4, the first clue says the entire circle, inside of it, that is. 2 is half of 4, and y equals 2 is a horizontal line. Our region of integration is above the line and inside the circle, so this region up here. And if you think of my sprinkler system concept again, whatever that value of theta is, we'll begin our journey and we are literally doing my calculus sprinkler system is everything that's above the line and within the circle. So somehow I have to buy a calculus sprinkler that waters only that region right there. That is my region of integration. So we can either wrestle with theta first or we can wrestle with R first. I don't think it makes too much of a difference. Um, there are different sets of muscles, basically, and we need to work out the whole aspect of the um, polar integration. So let's just start with theta. So theta is going to start here at whatever this particular value is, and it's going to keep going until we end up over here. And let me just draw again. Once we discover this theta, this value over here will be pi minus that theta. We still have to determine if this theta is going to be, we'll call one of our nicer angles, or if it'll be more interesting. There's so many ways we can view this, but let me just drop this one in. From here to here is the radius of the circle, which is four units. From here to here is two units. The sine of theta is two over four, which is one half. So therefore that makes my theta, um, well, that's right, pi over six. That means this theta over here must be 5 pi over 6. So those are the theta boundaries for our region of integration. The R boundaries um, are going to go from, again, using similar um, vocabulary to what I've been doing before, is between a horizontal line and circle. The closer boundary is the line, the farther boundary is the circle. Closer is the line, farther boundary is the circle. Well, the circle has uh, an equation that's not too bad at all. 
um, x squared plus y squared is 16 is the same as the polar equation r equals 4. The horizontal line y equals 2, r sine theta would therefore equal 2. So therefore r equals 2 cosecant of theta. That would be our other r boundary. Finally, we'll take our theta and our limits of integration, or as I'm calling them, our boundaries, and write them into our double integral. So we have a desire to write this plus y squared into polar. So dA becomes r times dr d theta. Our theta boundaries were pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. And our r boundaries are from 2 cosecant theta to 4. And last but not least, x squared plus y squared cannot remain in our polar integral. So x squared plus y squared is r squared sine of r squared times r dr d theta. I think you will find that if you began to integrate this, you would have some success followed by a challenge that may or may not be something that integrates in a standard form. So my directions were just to write it in polar form. So there we have it. Until next time.